Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to do a project called Steamroller. So we want to flatten a nested array. You must account for varying levels of nesting. Use read, search, ask if you get stuck. Try pair program. Okay, so the idea here, um, first off, let's make it so that we can read this. Um, so we'll set this equal to a variable of result. R-E-S-U-L-T. And then we'll say console.log the result. So now we can see what we're working with. So right now we're just passing back the array to the, and th since we're passing this in, uh, it works. Now, um, we want to solve this programmatically, but one way we could just do this is just go flat. So what that does is it takes, um, I'm just going to comment out flat right now. You'll see that this is a nested array. We've got two is an array, and then three is within an array, and four is actually hidden because it's an object. And so um, when we call flat on it once, two becomes a non-array and three is taken away uh, from being a, a, it's out of this array and then four is still settled in there. So if we call flat again, uh, four is gone. And then if we call flat again, we've got, you know, the solution. If we run the test, this passes. Now, however, this wouldn't work if, you know, for, say we had an unlimited data set, then we would have to call flat again and our function would just start to look um, ludicrous. So how could we do this programmatically instead of going dot flat, 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 flat like that? Because um, that's not a great solution. So what we could do is say, <clears throat> well, we could say in here, we can say array is equal to array dot flat, right? And this is, does the same thing, but we could pass this into a conditional statement. So if we wrapped this in a while statement, well, first off, let's just do it in a wall statement where we, let's like create an index of uh, zero and say, um, you know, while i is greater than, or is less than four, we could say um, array is equal to array dot flat. Oh, and then we need to make sure to say i plus equals one. Okay, and then this one, if we get rid of this, basically we're doing it programmatically, right? If we make this equal to, well, i is less than one. If it's zero, we're back to the original one. If it's one, we're iterating up. If it's two, we're iterating up. And if it's three, well, we've got our answer and that would pass the test as well. So we could theoretically make this like, you know, 3,000 3, and that would pretty much adjust for <laughs> any sort of thing that we wanted. However, this is still um, not a super elegant answer because this, um, if we do it this way, we're going to be calling flat on, the, on any array that happens, you know, 3,000, 30,000 times. And though we'll probably never run into data that, that is that nested, um, it's better if we do something like, because we can look through this array and say, ask, is this an array? And this would turn no. Is this an array? True. Okay, run flat. And then run it again. Is this an array? Mm, yeah, uh, no. Is this array? Well, this will be rendered out if we're doing it the second time or the first time to uh, zero. Yeah, the first time this would not array, not array, not array, but then four, it would say, yeah, array. Okay, so we'll do it again. Not array, not array, not array, four. Yeah, array. So no, let's do it again. Three. Okay, good. But how can we do that programmatically? Well, we can pass in here using um, the sum function. So we could say array.sum function, and then we'd call a data point. Okay, cool. So with each one, we're calling it a data point. Is this a data point? Is this a data point? So what we can do, because um, yeah, like here, if we were to console.log the result uh, at position two, um, Result at position two, we would say, well, what, you, what we can do is we can say um, array dot is array. And then this is true. Okay, so put at position true, zero, one, two. So is this an array? Yes. What about at one? Is this array? True. Okay, position zero, is this an array? false. This is an array because it's done. So what we're doing is we're iterating through and then just calling this on each um, instance. Well, we, we just want to call, instead of saying result, we're going to say data point because we're passing in each data point. Doof, doof, doof. And then we pass console log result 
And, uh, oh, it's not working. Why is it that? Um, okay. The, the, yeah, these need to be, these don't have implicit returns, so you have to call return on this. And that makes it so that it happens. So we're returning true or false. We can't just have the program read true or false. We need to return to this function true or false. And now if we ran this, it would be fine. And the cool thing about now is it only runs as many times that it needs to, but we could pass, you know, arrays in infinitely. Um, and it would still render out uh, perfectly correct. Um, and so, yeah, that's a good way to do this. Now we don't need this I stuff anymore because we're not using an index. We're actually just passing in. We're actually just iterating over the array as many times as needed until there are no more array data points um, on here. Um, another, we could turn this into an arrow function, which would make it a little bit cleaner looking, I suppose. The, the, the code would be a little cleaner. Um, yeah, I think that's good to go. So while we are, well, this, this basically just says, um, all right, is array. I mean, we could extract this into a separate function because I think that's kind of confusing it's a function of, um, is while there is an array in the data set, right? We could do something like that and then say, pass in the array, even though I don't like calling functions array. So if I were writing this for some production code, uh, if I were writing this in production code, I would not call this an array. I would say like a data set. data point array dot is array return okay and so now that we have this here we can say while there is an array in the data set we pass in the array steamroll array oh yeah now to me this cleans the code up as well because now we actually see what this is doing right Maybe we, yeah, oh yeah, here we can implicit, oh yeah, we've just got to return the result of this as well if we extract it from here. Cool. And so, uh, some people think that this is crazy. They, they don't like the idea of extracting functions like this, but I think it makes sense because we can say, well, uh, there is an array in the data set. You know, if there's an array in the data set, then we run array.flat again. And we just keep doing that. That makes a lot more sense to me than saying um, that, than throwing this into there. And so that's just a uh, something that I kind of think about. So to me, this code looks a little bit more re readable. I would actually change this into something. Instead of steam roll array, I would be like, um, you know, flatten array infinitely or something like that, in order to make it more clear. Um, but this, there is an array in the data set. That makes sense. Like, you know, is there an array in the data set? Yes. Okay, then run array.flat. Is there an array in the data set? We, I think we can actually console, oh no, we could console log the data point to make it a little bit more explicit as to like what's happening here. It's going one, two, and then here it's saying, yeah, there's an array in the data set, so run flat. And then so now it runs it again, one, two, and then three. But three is now an array in the data set. So we flatten it and we run it again. And then we've got the four, but the four is way nested. So it's got to go from one, two, three, from being nested three, nested three times to nested two times to nested one time to finally not being nested. And then we return the array because this stops rendering true. Run the test. I think it still passes. So yeah, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next lesson.